Greetings viewers and welcome back. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. We've got another weekly replay here from Sparky Pants Studios. I'm of course Red Rupee and my co-caster. I'm Deckard. How's it going everybody? We are excited for this match. Uh, it's our first 3v3 replay Tuesday. We've yeah. got some uh, Thursday Night Throwdowns with that, but uh, first yep. time doing a replay Tuesday. People have been going crazy on the 3v3, so we figured we had to get a little bit of that action in here. So keep in mind that this is actually six players and not a one-on-one. -on -one. Each player is controlling an individual rig this time, so hopefully that means the micro will be a little higher. All the rigs will be performing at top spec. Right, and then the downside to that is you can't necessarily pull off your combos as easily uh, as before because you're not using one brain, you're using three. So you got to get that all timed up perfectly for any kind of wombo combos you're trying to do. Uh, so what have we got? We've got some players here that we don't recognize except yeah. Rollick on the red team. Yeah, we've got Rollick, Bizarrick, and Nen Nederwoot, Nederwoot. As, as the red team. And who have we got on the blue? We've got Fortis, Whisper Died, and Scarface Tony. I'm wondering about that Whisper Died. It might be somebody that doesn't like our very own Whisper inside this office. I hope not. But it looks like we've got Fortis coming in with a standard widget, uh, standard Plutus for Whisper Died, and Scarface Tony is bringing Palm Rockets, Crumple Panels, and Down of Vortex, which I like because then you can suck them in, and if they try to escape you, you bring them back in with that Palm Rocket. So what have we got on the red side? On the red side, we've got uh, we've got Ground Pounder and Shredder Field along with Down of Vortex on that bus. we also got some Drop Micro. Yeah, it's kind of just hanging out there. And then, uh, so it's Tank and two mechs on this side, which is actually pretty surprising. Although the mech of Relic here, this is kind of a DPS carry turbine. He's got the core hammer, the frame instability, corrosive rounds along with three offensive abilities on top of that. And then a fairly standard uh, widget barring that capacity overload. So interesting that neither side really has uh, a, a, a I guess a traditional DPS gunner. Yeah. So we do have the substitution of turbine in on the red side, but the blue side I think has latch generator, which is going to be a lot harder to pull off later game, but there isn't a whole lot of AoE uh, coming in from the red. So all they really have to do is watch out for that shredder field. But overall, I think the red team's composition is probably going to be a bit scarier. Uh, they have they have a lot of slows, crowd control on top of that, some damage spells. So Oof, look at this coming down. But all of the Positron Condenser completely got negated by that crumple panel. That was nice. Crumple panels is... Uh, it's funny because we see it so rarely used in one-on-one, -on -one, but it's on so yeah. many tanks in three-on-three -three because there's so many just one-on-one -on -one battles that tend to happen, and that crumple panels can give you the edge pretty easily. We saw Relic there just barely escaping. Just barely, and I think by the skin of her teeth, because if that tank had been level three, Down of Vortex would have been turned on instantly and taken her out. So and by yeah. the way, this map has Hive Buster, Total Vision, and Boss Slayer for this round, so hopefully with Relic on the scene, we'll see some, some boss push initiation. I have a feeling she might be leaving the team. But yeah, as it stands right now, one point finally went down there for the blue team. Uh, a little bit of misplaced heal, healing up everybody there, but uh, allowed Netterwoot to get away, and now Whisper died. Coming in with a second core for the blues, while Scarface Tony continues running interference on that forward vision tower. Uh, so far, doing a good job tying up all three rigs for the time being while the cores go down. Fortis gets nailed! by that ground pounder, not getting slowed, but the Positron doesn't quite connect. The return Positron hits Netterwood, sending him on back, but Scarface Tony's deep in enemy territory, trying to get a kill in here somewhere. The healing bubbles go down again, wow. healing just everybody across the board. But uh, I'm not sure why the Blues are fighting so hard here. They're, they don't have any more cores. I, I don't know either. I mean, they're right next to their red player's base. Uh, not I necessarily the safest the move. Vision. They are going for the total vision. They're not going to get it because that's three, three red team still alive sitting on their own vision tower that will decap very uh, in due time um so now netterwood's coming up with his first core of the match first point of the red team is for this match 12 minutes remaining uh but that was a very intense fight the heels all over the place and nobody actually going down um, i like seeing that now we've got blue team up in the upper right corner taking some of this experience and possibly this hive, unless Bizarre can come in and, and halt this. Yeah, I like the Blues playing aggressive. He's trying to pick off some of those Kavash goons right now, opening uh -oh. the field for Ralic to get in here and start putting down some damage. Here comes the root, but it doesn't connect. The Positrons go down again. The heal bubbles keeping everything healthy, but now all those Kavash goons getting obliterated by Netterwoot Shredder field. Ralic is low. Netterwoot's at half health, and I don't think the red team is going to be able to hold on to this again. Yeah, they're going to have to retreat, um, which is interesting because we thought the opposite. We thought it would be uh, more of the, the hard-hitting side of things. 
but well, I the, think the, the I think thing with the red like, team is that uh, looking. I mean, look at their rigs. Almost none of their abilities are unlocked yet. Yeah. They need to get to level three. They I think do. They need to stop fighting so much and just go off and farm. I know the blue team's in their face. I, al uh, I also think it's interesting. Netherwoot is using his shredder field a lot. In this one case that we just saw, he did not lose any life, uh, any health. Nobody was targeting him. But in all these previous battles, that that armor. Uh, decrease is also not helpful for them in those types of those battles. So that's like why I think the red team has been turning around a lot uh, with these kind of a little bit squishy mechs, though mechs are usually more tough than this. Wow. I mean, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of like just how we said that crumple panels is actually a lot more used in 3v3 than one-on-one. But similarly, we see things like Shredder Field, where as Shredder Field it can be very dangerous in one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lot harder uh, in, in three on three, players tend to not just focus down that rig the wow. second they. Because right. in one on one, you see crumple panels. You just hit, or sorry, you hit shredder field. You just hit four right. quick attack, and that tank's gonna melt. Yeah, and uh, just now I was noticing that Bizarric seems to be placing his heals across uh, all units. So it might just be the case also that he's new to the game, not really uh, understanding that heals are are based on all units and they can heal even your enemies. And that's what gives a little strategy to drop zone, being able to place that heal bubble or the glob launcher in the right position so that you're only healing yourself and not healing any Kavash or any of your enemy rigs pilots. Um, yeah, a few, a few of those so that abilities could be, that could be contributing fire, to the yeah. blue team being able to... It looks like Fornis is suffering from the same a little bit unless he doesn't mind healing up the Kavash, it's alright. I mean, maybe he was trying to get those goons in that yeah, particular maybe. instance, but uh, now with these tier 2 hives going down for both sides, it's 2 to 1. No objectives really in play as of yet. Hive Buster will be happening soon. There was a little contestation of Total Vision earlier on, but now everything's coming to a head in the center here. The Shredder Field goes down, the first Positron misses, and now everyone's throwing stuff down. The wall actually splits the team evenly and leaves Scarface Tony kind of stranded up here against oh, all no, three Oh no, and Bizarre got him on the other side of the battle. I don't know where he's going. What it's is, just a mess right now. It, it is just like, a mess. Uh, I don't know if they're not calling shots or what, but every rig seems to just kind of been picking its own targets. No one seems to be really focusing down any particular rig. We haven't seen a lot in the way of kills here so far, despite all this team fighting early on. And here comes Netherwu doing, a, I think, a big mistake there, using Dino Vortex oh, no. to bring his enemies closer to him while he had low health, and then he followed up with Shredderfield, who dropped his armor, and that, that's what caused him that death just there. Um, so now three to two on the on the, the rigs. This is going to give blue team just enough time to upload these two cores. I highly doubt these two mechs are going to stop this from happening, especially with this heels going down. The po capacity overload. I said that a little weird, but capacity overload went down and uh, did not stop the uplink, but it did enough damage. Oh wow! Here comes another one, just missing. Whisper died is low on health, not going to be able to join this battle. Now Scarface Tony was able to use his palm rockets to bring in Bizarre. Red team again is low on health. Here comes Netherwu with that Shredder Field. Nice usage there of the Dino Vortex. Scarface Tony's pulling away. And Rollick, oh no, Rollick goes down. She wasn't watching her health too much. Netherwu is a little bit of a beast right now, just taking on these two rigs. But he is getting healed by the enemy, so that's okay for him. Oh, and there goes that Positron Condenser, just locking him in place. But Bizarre coming up from behind. Scarface Tony was locked down, but that doesn't stop Scarface Tony from turning around and palm rocketing Bizarre to death with that 200 damage. Netherwood activates that Shredder Field again, but it's going to hurt him in the long run. This isn't a battle that you're going to DPS down your opponent. you got to win the long game. The capacity overload comes in yet again. Rollick throwing down all the damage, trapping Scarface Tony in this. Netherwood not able to approach either with Fortis providing the heals and zoning out with that Positron. Oh, and Netherwood's so low on health, but he was able to get that um, a ground pounder off. And once again, with super low health, he calls in the Dino Vortex. Not sure what he's thinking there. Uh, maybe he wants to get his enemies closer to Bazaar, who was just about to come rescue him, but he was so low on health. This game has just been brutal. It's just been non-stop fighting throughout the match. Neither yeah. side really going deep on the uh, on the attacks here, which is surprising, <laughs> considering... Considering you don't get experience or points for doing this. Right, I'd, ex I'd expect to see uh, I'd expect to see the red team, especially with uh, a few of their later unlocks. They've got frame instability on two of their rigs. Well, I think what happens is that if one team gets blood hungry, uh, you kind of you feed off that and you just want to retaliate. I mean, sitting in your home base, sure. I mean, the good thing, the, the smart thing to do is is to leave the exits, the the side exits of your base, and start farming, and then your opponent will just uh, ignore what's going on, or hopefully ignore what's going on. But yeah, blue team seems very. Uh, 
battle hungry, and I think it's been throwing the red team off. Five to one with six and a half minutes remaining. Both teams are at squad level five. So yeah, a lot of things not unlocked at the moment. They're just going head to head, finally doing some farming right now, but I mean this is gonna get them the high buster bonus, I think, well before the blues. The blues are trying to get something in here on this uh this bottom tower. But five to two right now, Fizzarek gets this and uh those two mechs aren't really gonna Oh, the Positrons go down, they don't really <laughs> manage to do anything to each other. Widget even with the uh even with the logic rerouter, so the stun doesn't land. Yeah. Oh, and the Hive Buster goes for Team Red, like you called, yes. Um, so it's another point for them. So 5-3, to three, anybody's game still. Yeah, with 5 minutes remaining, I guess Ball Slayer is probably just not going to happen. Probably Total not. Vision is still in the game right now. Look but, at uh, them, they're just going crazy, just battling it out. And look at this, Fortis is a little trapped here. He's got two Alphas on his tail, and, and his only other exit is through the Red Enemy territory. So now his teammates come in to help him. Fortis... Trying to head off Rollick and Bazark in the past. There we go, Scarfication, uh, Scarface Tony bringing Rollick in with that uh, Palm Rockets and the Dino Vortex. So a nice combo there, but the wall was just a little too late to trap Rollick inside and give that final death blow. The Blues have the upper hand on the team level right now, though. I'm surprised they aren't playing a bit more aggressively and trying to take advantage of that current advantage that they have because they... They should be probably winning this. They've been winning the team fight so far, all things considered. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Plutus goes down even right here to Relic. Relic's just playing on the back line, letting the tank She does not Bridget. want yeah. Fortis to live. She is. Look at those stutter stepping and also... One more uh, hit. Oh, oh no! Scar it got retargeted by yeah. Scarface Tony. Nice job by Scarface Tony to save his uh, partner. And there goes the Positron Condenser locking down both mechs for a time. Capacity Overload thrown out just at the nick of time to, 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 to secure their escape. So now Rallyx coming in, going to upload the 6th core. Blue uh -huh. Team is far behind now in terms, not far behind, but they haven't uploaded the core in a while. Yeah, I mean the Reds have closed the gap and now finally are taking the lead for the first time this game with 4 minutes remaining. They could still go either way. One point means, you know, practically nothing at this point especially considering there are still cores in the hands of the Blues. Wow, look at that. Rallyx saving Netherwoot there with another capacity overload because Netherwoot uh, was... Scarface needs to get that core in. Ah, gosh, where's he going? Yeah, I guess he wants that, that vision again. Um, no reason, I mean, in particular, except just that extra pressure. But yeah, Blue Team needs to get those cores in, and then that way Scarface Tony can go help farm. But now Scarface Tony is locked down by that root. And uh, the Crumble Panel saving him some health, but pulling in another tank and Bazaric, not going to do him any favors. They're definitely going to... Oh, wow, did you see that? The Capacity Overload nailed him right as the Down of Vortex came in. So a lot of damage going down to Scarface Tony. Ford is saving the day a little bit. Whisper died with the wall to save the day for all three. So now four cores potentially in the hands of the blue team with five to six and three minutes remaining. It could be getting dicey pretty quick. Rallick's still looking to unlock some more cores for his team on the back end here with his level two hive. But uh, in the meantime, the blues are going to start taking that advantage back. And with only three minutes remaining, they're going to need to win the next team fight in order to at least tie the game up. Yeah, so Scarface Tony's uploading his seventh core. Bazaar's just uh, kind of poking in and out and letting Rallick and Netherwoot get their cores. And now they're going for a boss. I guess they really want that 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 boss uh, buff. I'm not sure why they rooted the minion instead of the main boss unit. Rallick coming in with low health, but that bizarre heals from behind are definitely going to save the day and let them get this boss buff. But this whole time, cores are being uploaded by the blue team, so it's now 9-6. to six. They are three cores behind, soon to be four cores behind, I think. Rally they didn't have another get the one boss hit either, so he didn't get his heal. Oh no. So yeah, it's 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 tricky right now. They've got two minutes to dunk three cores. They only have two in their hands even at all, so they kind of they either need to farm another hive, which their only option is way back here or way up here. And then other than that, they either have to steal a core from their opponents or take total vision. That's that's kind of their play right now is to either steal a core and take total vision. With two minutes remaining, they really don't have any other options. Yeah, and I don't know what Vice is doing. I don't know why they weren't ferrying cores over. Um, if I was blue team, I would just camp the uplink and defend this because now that they've got cores on them, no, they don't have cores on them. They've pulled off. That's a smart move. They do not have any cores on them. So if one of them goes down, they will not uh, help 
get the win or the tie for the red team. I know the blues seem to get, be getting pincered here. Whisper died in a lot of trouble going for the reroute, but no, it doesn't quite connect. Scarface in here with oh, his no. special move, and where did Widget go? Widget's so far away from the team, completely I also left take, alone. I also take it back. Scarface Tony did bring a core with him. That is not good news. If Scarface Tony goes down, that's another core for the red team, but red team hasn't even uploaded their eighth core. There's a minute left. What is going on? Widget's down there healing by herself, but uh -oh. abandoned uh -oh. her tank. Now the opposing tank, Netherwood, slicing everyone up with that shredder field, taking them down. Fortis goes down as well. There it is. And it's one or no rigs on the field right now. The score could get tied up, but they're not going to settle for that. It looks like they're going for the total vision here. Plutus is coming in to intercept, but without the help of that lapse generator, there's no hide down here. This is the problem with running lapse generators, your main DPS. Is that, that these late game situations, you don't have the time to get those minions on the field. And I think with the composition of the blue team, that was kind of their last resort. Yeah, that's a nice wall there from Whisper Died. Oh but my that's gosh, there's 20 seconds network. remaining. They didn't, they didn't grab the core and get it dunked. Oh my goodness. They're heading back up there now. Okay, they're going to try to tie it up. I was about to so, say, if they didn't get that core on there, Whisper Died does go down. Oh Widget's no. moving. And look at this blue team player. Vice is oh sitting in no, the base not doing anything. he completely forgot. He was trying so hard. I mean, you and have to Fortis stop the well. uplink, but stopping the uplink would have only stopped oh, the no! Oh, no! Oh, man. Wait a minute. They took total vision at the very last second. Yeah, but I've never seen total vision taken at the... Holy smokes, I wish I could rewind that. Uh, I thought for sure that blue team was going to take it because um, Fortis was at the at the uplink preventing Rallic from uploading or Bizarre from uploading. And then at the last second, they got the ten, the, the two points. That is... Yep, at two seconds into overtime. That was the final play. That was two seconds into overtime? I'm going to have to look Because Relic started... Oh, with the, with yes. The final, with the, what would have been the tie-making point. Right, and then they got total vision, and then he, she pulled off the uplink. Yep. There was, the timing on there that was, was very no, close. No, there was a two-second window in which this widget could have stunned and stopped that upload, right. which would have stopped the timer before the total vision went down. <laughs> that was the only chance they had at that point. Oh, a wow. really interesting end game situation right there. Uh, I mean, I, I'd have to go back and watch it myself too and see if that widget actually did try to drop that positron and it was dodged. I heard the, I heard the upload end mm -hmm. there at the end, but it was right as the total vision was scored, I think. Yeah, that the was... Positron does have about a about a half second right. uh, firing time. Right. Because, I don't know. That, that yeah, was... I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and watch that at a, at a quarter speed because that was intense. Man, I mean, I, I was expecting the red team to be more on top of that, but the blues were all over them the entire game. I don't know if that was the help of uh, of that, that crumpled panels and... Uh, sustaining widget like keeping them I mean Scarface Tony was just never off the field yeah he was just constantly in their face I mean we saw some great plays from the Reds but we never really saw like the big combo right we never saw where the Dino Vortex went down then the stun then the root then the acid like if all of those had connected that would have been a dead team no problem yeah and interestingly enough there are more deaths on the blue team than there are on the the red team and so blue team was ahead most of the game Obviously, the very end, red team took it, but um, I, I guess I expected uh, with that many deaths on blue team, there'd be a higher spread for the red team. So, interesting game. Yeah, I mean, we can see it was it was neck and neck until the very end there, but uh, man, that was that, that was close. I don't yeah. think I've seen an three, end three game. Three v three is very fun, <laughs> I will say. Yeah, it may not be the top end competitive, you know, be all eSport, but it, it's it's a lot of fun, and honestly, I need a break once in a while. Yeah, so sometimes, one -on -one but not too long, because I realize that I play 3v3 way too much, and my 1v1 skills are garbage. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll, I, lose, you'll lose those hands. You'll man. lose those hands. That's real bad. I cannot do anything I was doing before. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps us up for this week's replay. Uh, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Share Stop by the social media. And uh, we've still got, if you, uh, all you got to do is hit that shift tab, hit hit a uh, community on the overlay there. That's you'll right. find the forums and right there at the top, there's a little thread that says, we need your replays. If you've got an awesome game, submit it there. Give us that game ID. Give us a little description. Entice us, if you will. But don't spoil it. And uh, 
and we'll try to get that game on the air here that's right. in the coming weeks. And but that's uh, it. If you have any friends that want to play Drop Zone and haven't yet, just remind them that we are free to play and ready for everybody to join. So spread the word and get your friends in the game as well. Free to play. All right, that wraps us up. This has been Red Rupee. This has been Deckard. We'll catch you guys next time. See ya, Belters. Belters.